Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, eCognition users, and uh, maybe people interested in becoming eCognition users, I hope so. Uh, this is Keith Peterson, the eCognition product manager, manager, coming to you live from our Munich office this evening. Wonderful sunny day here in Munich. And we are really happy to have this uh, webinar come together uh, for a, a very interesting topic, combining, well, actually combining several very interesting topics, first of all, deep learning, the use of uh, UAVs, and all this to solve a problem uh, within the precision agriculture market. Um, we're going to have a, a, a great session tonight. Uh, we know our presenter quite well, and uh, I've had the pleasure of listening uh, to a video present in the past, and uh, I'm just really excited that he has been able to help us out today. Uh, before we get into the webinar, though, uh, I have a few things to, to go through and clarify. First of all, our agenda for today. We're going to start out with a brief introduction to the Trimble eCognition software. And then I'll explain uh, what, how uh, deep learning works within eCognition. And then I will hand over uh, the presentation to a video and who is most likely the reason most of you are here this evening for this very interesting uh, research that he has been doing with his team. And following the webinar, uh, please uh, stick around. We are going to have a question and answer session. Uh, so if you have questions during the webinar, you can submit them via the question field at any time to us. Uh, we will answer questions uh, via chat during the webinar, but we will also save questions for the end and uh, try and get to those uh, at, the, at the end of this session. So please stay tuned. Before we get much further, I just want to clarify Everybody is in a listen-only mode in this webinar, so please don't uh, be afraid if something's wrong, that you, you can't talk to us. Um, use the, the question field if you would like to communicate uh, with myself or Christian Weiser, the Trimble uh, market manager here for our imaging software groups, which includes eCognition and our info software. He will be assisting this evening with uh, fielding questions and uh, at the end of the session. Um, also, the webinar will be recorded, so if you have to exit at some point or maybe if someone comes in late, uh, don't worry. The session is recorded. It will be available online at our Trimble Geospatial Webinar Archive. That being said, we'll get into the introduction here and quickly get into the topic. Uh, I know we're all excited for this. So, just some background. There may be some new eCognition users or people People that are completely new to the eCognition software itself. What is this software? Just a, a quick uh, summary. Uh, we provide a development environment for uh, geospatial applications. We can create what we call rule sets that are designed to solve our geospatial problems. This could be the interpretation of image data in combination with elevation data to create uh, geo. Uh, spatial information. So taking that data, transforming it into geospatial information. We can support various features around the vector data sets, and we can also do, of course, change detection here. And this is the environment for developing these automated or semi-automated approaches. It's really up to the user how much they want to do in this environment. But that is what the eCognition suite provides. And the real heart of this is the eCognition developer software. And uh, a video will be showing this uh, this evening in our, in our webinar. Briefly, how does deep learning work in eCognition? Well, just uh, right off the bat, uh, we we chose to implement deep learning in version 9.3 of the software. This was released in 2017, so it's been in there for a little over a year now. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that it's it's being used now by, by our users. It's not an easy topic, I have to admit. Um, but what we do is we are leveraging our deep learning technology on the Google TensorFlow library. And to do this, we include a number of algorithms within the software. If you scroll down, you'll see uh, in the algorithm list uh, a bunch of them with a sort of a spidery looking uh, icon. Those are our deep learning or our CNN convolutional neural network algorithm. We have algorithms to automate the sample patch generation. We know that's a real problem in deep learning is how to 
create these bulks, these massive bulks of samples, but you can do this in an automated fashion with any cognition uh, via an algorithm. We also have, of course, the algorithm to create that convolutional neural network, that CNN model within cognition. And once we create that, we have the algorithms to then train the model, apply the model, obviously save and load the model so we can transfer it to different types of e-cognition projects. And there's also algorithms to assess the accuracy of uh, your CNN and uh, give you feedback on how well, or maybe not so well, uh, this, uh, this application could be working. I'm, uh, like I said, very happy that uh, we could get Ovidio Chilik uh, to present with us tonight. Uh, we know him for a number of years now at various conferences. I have been familiar with him since his work at the, the University of Salzburg. So here, just a brief introduction to him. Uh, Ovidio uh, completed his PhD at the University of Salzburg in Austria uh, and is now uh, part of the Asner Lab at the, the Carnegie Institution for Science at Stanford University or in Stanford, California. I learned he will be a transition or is he currently transitioning uh, to the University of Arizona? Correct uh, video? Yes. And um, yeah, great. He's online already. And uh, his focus of a lot of his work has been mapping tropical forest carbon stocks and uh, the emissions using high resolution remotely sensed data. If uh, you'd like to learn more about his uh, work and his publications, uh, I, you can see his website listed here at the, at the bottom of this slide. And uh, I'm sure he would be happy to. You to reach out to you with any questions you may have. So this being said, uh, like I said, very brief introduction to e-cognition. I really want to jump into this topic. And I will hand you over now to uh, Ovidio. And he will introduce you and show you the work that he has been doing on uh, with deep learning in combination with object-based image analysis and e-cognition uh, to look at uh, some precision agriculture applications. So bear with us for just one moment. I'm going to change the presenter and hand the presentation over to a video. So a video, the screen is now yours. Take it away. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Good evening. My name is Ovidio Chilik. And today I will be talking about the deep learning application uh, in the cognition and also combining deep learning with some refinement using object-based image analysis. So this is the work that I have been done uh, with John, Andy, Robert, and Maggie Kelly uh, while I was uh, visiting Solar at UC Berkeley. So big thanks to, to my collaborators. Okay, so uh, it's time for some acknowledgement. So this work has been started while I was uh, a PhD scholar at the University of Salzburg, a department of geoinformatics and a visiting scholar at UC Berkeley. And now I'm a postdoc in the Aston lab and transitioning from Carnegie Institution from Stanford to Arizona State University uh, to the newly uh, built Center for Global Discovery and Conservation Science. If you want to find more about uh, their great work of object-based image analysis and environmental application, you can check the websites uh, for the University of Salzburg Kelly Lab from Berkeley and astronautlab.org. That being said, the, today's webinar, uh, we will cover a bit of convolutional neural networks inside the e-cognition and uh, an object-based image analysis refinement of the CNN results uh, by presenting a technique called uh, named SuperPixels that was implemented also recently within the software. So all of this will be uh, ex exemplified for a precision agriculture uh, application. And this is to uh, identify individual trees from uh, an orchard. I will be back soon with, with more details about that. So we will have uh, three parts two big parts and, and at the end of a Q&A sec uh, section, we will be talking at the beginning about the CNN algorithms inside the e-cognition and what can we do with them. And then we uh, will show an example of how to combine the CNN results and uh, further OBIA refinement techniques. 
So we'll have two big parts followed by uh, demo sessions inside the software, and then I will show the, the final results that we can uh, talk more about them and you can question them. So we will be using uh, today the Ecognition version 9.4, the latest one, which uh, improved a lot the user experience by uh, simplified data viewing or faster rule set development. I'm not sure how many of you already uh, work with 9.4, but highly suggested since it uh, speeds up your uh, development of the rule sets. So as Keith mentioned before, Decognition is it's widely used in earth sciences to develop rule set for the automatic analysis of remote sensing data. And it's a popular software for uh, object-based image analysis applications. So we will have today a study case uh, that is related to uh, the paper we have published in uh, back in November, a few months ago in the journal uh, Drones together with John, Robert, Andy and, and Maggie. So you can check this one for more details. If you have uh, any any questions, I might ask them or uh, answer them, or you can check the paper. So first of all, our study area is located in, in the Central Valley in California, in the San Joaquin Valley, and it has about 75 hectares. Um, we will use UAV imagery with 12 centimeters uh, special resolution. This is just a sample uh, parcel of the uh, images we will be using. We have four bands, the green, red, near infrared and red edge uh, bands that we will use in the uh, analysis. So this study area is related to the link of research and extension center uh, where the center grows nearly uh, 603 uh, crop varieties, mostly citrus species with trees of various ages and sizes. So you can check their website for more details about what uh, uh, they are doing. So deep learning uh, is implemented in the cognition since the version 9.3. So this is just a, a, an image of a very simple CNN architecture where we have on the left side an image patch of one layer, usually it's not the case to have only one layer, but multiple uh, layer in the name of spectral bands. Here we have a 36 by 36 image patch to which we apply a convolutional filter. Uh, this filter is also a name, sometimes kernel of size of nine uh, by nine. After applying the convolution filter, we get uh, another layer of reduced size of 28 by 28 by uh, basically getting rid of the edges after, after applying the convolution. And then it is usually apply a max pooling technique, which uh, decrease the size of the, of, of the layer obtained after the convolution to half. Usually it is applied with a window of two by two and, and a straight a jump of two to the, to the right and down. So we can have multiple hidden layers uh, and uh, the main concept of the deep learning uh, also inside the cognition is that the output of one step becomes the input of another. So in the end, after having all these hidden layers, we get the final layers in this case of five class units, meaning that we had five class targets in our training uh, uh, process. You will often see this figure of the CNN in, in many research that you have the image layer and then you convolve it to a reduced size uh, layer and then max pooling and then the final layer of the prediction. So in the case, in, in our case today for the identification of trees from the UAV images, we will be looking as the target class trees and we will identify a single point in space, uh, preferably the center of the tree. Yeah. So when I'm talking about uh, training samples, we use three classes. Uh, we use trees we, and then we use soil and weeds to uh, make sure that the trees are well differentiated by uh, their environment. And the weeds was added because some, uh, let's say, big bushes can resemble the circular uh, shape of a tree. So we use roughly around 4,000 training samples per class. 
And for the trees, we had a nice, really nice uh, tree database with location from the link of research center that we use in our uh, research. So this was just a short introduction of the CNN um, until now. So we obtained some results that we will also, uh, I will also show them inside the software. So this is just an uh, RGB of uh, red, uh, green and near infrared bands. And then we will obtain a heat map of probabilities of, of a single pixel being a tree between zero and one, and one being the highest probability of uh, tree identified. And then we will uh, just make some very basic uh, refinements in which we can uh, filter the results and then finding the local maxima for each uh, bulb that we see here that is it's actually a tree. So in the end, we will get the prediction on, on where a tree is and we can uh, further use this information to delineate trees, for example. So that's it at, at this point. I, at this part, I will switch now to the uh, e-cognition software. So we have this really nice UAV images of 12 centimeters in spatial resolution. Here we have uh, in e-cognition 9.4, we can play around with the image layers on the left. So here we have a combination of green, red, and near infrared. If we zoom in, we can nicely see the shapes of the trees uh, combined with, with uh, trees of varying sizes and geometries. So for the beginning, we, we have uh, imported uh, three vector layers, namely the ground truth, which is uh, our trees identified. If we click on them, we will see them. Uh, the bare soil, which are random samples and weeds. So we use these three classes to train, uh, to train the algorithm. Here we have layer one to four, the four spectral bands, and layer five is the NDVI that we will not use for the CNN, but we will use it for the later uh, refinement of the CNN uh, results. So I think now it's time to walk through the, the rule set that we have used to identify the trees. So first of all, we need to uh, prepare, let's say, uh, the project in order to apply the CNN, and for this, we have this uh, big study area that we have split it into two parts. Uh, we train uh, the CNN in the northern part and we apply it on the southern part that was not, not used during the training. So for this, we just say the coordinates of the test region and the map region using the, the algorithm update region. This will split our study areas in two. So if we execute it, we will not see it at the moment, but we can specify for further uh, processing in which uh, region should be applied. So, uh, as mentioned before, we have the ground root samples, which are the most important in, in our case, the, ta the target location of the trees. And we derived a small buffer around this in order to um, increase the number of our training samples. At this moment, we only have one pixels, one, one pixel as uh, a single tree, but the, by applying the buffering operation, then we will have uh, more, and it's usually a window of around three by three around each, uh, let me turn this one on. So now we have a small buffer around each tree samples. You can skip this step if you think you have enough training sample for all of your classes, and if you don't, this is a nice uh, way of uh, increasing the number of your training samples and also to create a more robust training samples for your target classes in the sense that you don't give him only the center of the tree, but it's only uh, shifted uh, west, east, north, and, uh, and, and south. So after we created the buffer, then we will run a chessboard segmentation that will give us the objects around each of, of the training sample. It will take like 30 seconds to run on this uh, very big image. And then we can cut the objects in the, in the training region. That means that every buffer here will be composed of around uh, three by three, roughly nine pixels. And from this, the algorithm 
will um, randomly choose uh, around 4,000 samples that we will uh, show a bit later. So now we have the segmentation results. You can turn this view of the segmentation here and turn this one off. So now we have the objects around if or around each of the training samples. So this is an object, we can see its characteristics. And we can go further and tell the algorithm that each object that contains more than zero uh, training samples for all of the three classes, the ground root, bare soil, and weeds, to be classified in one of the, uh, the three uh, classes. So we, we run this one now. So the trees were classified as target class, which is the trees. Now the bare soil gets classified and then the la last one, the weeds gets classified. So now we have very small objects around our scene that are classified into one of the three uh, classes. In order to get rid, because we apply this on the entire uh, scene, so now we see a clear delineation between our training area and our test area the here south. So we have to clean the test region in order to, to leave it empty for uh, the application of the train CNN in the upper part. So we merge all of the objects here in the south and now we, we should have a clean region without any objects here in the south while we still have the object here in the northern part. So again, what we did until now, it uh, was to prepare the scene for the application of the CNN. And we got these really nice uh, buffers around each of the training sample. And then just to evenly uh, sample the objects, we can apply a chessboard of a size of one on the, um, on the objects that we, we created. So we will use the class soil, target, and width, target meaning the three uh, class. So by applying this one, we will make sure that we will split this object into smaller object of one pixel size from which the algorithm will choose which pixel will uh, be considered to take a uh, training samples. So this was a very basic preparation of the project. So now we, we can go uh, more into the uh, actual implementation of the CNN into e-cognition. So we have our three classes, the target, soil, and weed. So now we will generate around 3,800 training samples. And this is because the, the class weed had around 3,800 samples. So I wanted to, to stick to uh, the same number of training samples for each class that we used. So the algorithm is named uh, generate label sample patches, uh, where you can specify here on the uh, domain, you can specify the, fil the class filter. So we want to generate the sample patches for the target class, for the tree class. And here on the right, you can specify the parameters of the algorithm. So you can uh, export your samples as uh, TIFF, which is, uh, in our case, is, is recommended. Uh, how many samples uh, should be created by the, uh, uh, this algorithm? and how big the sample patches should be. In our case, this 40 means that we will generate 40 by 40 sample patches. And imagine like a 40 by 40 window around each center of the tree that will be exported as a TIFF image. You can either use an uh, image layer array. This means that you should have an array of all the image layers that you want to use. And if not, you can uh, simply specify uh, manually the layers that you want to use. In our case, we have the, the first four layers, which are the, the spectral bands from the UAV imagery acquired. Um, furthermore, you can specify the sample folder where the, where the samples will be saved. And this, is, uh, this will be saved in the scene directory uh, in a special folder named samples. And this is the last one is very important, the delete ex existing sample folder and you can specify no if you don't want to overwrite already uh, existing samples from, uh, from another test, let's say. So this, uh, this is also valid for the 
for the other two classes for the soil and weeds. So uh, I have pre-computed some of the uh, algorithms in order to uh, not lose time now, but you can see that here it was like roughly one and a half minutes for these uh, generated sample patches. And I showed some of these samples back in the presentation uh, of 40 by 40 uh, sample patches. So after we create the sample patches, they will be exported in, in, in a samples folder that can further be used to feed uh, the model after we, we create it. So this creation of the sample patches is really nice because it, it uh, saves you a lot of time by, by automating exporting your, your sample uh, patches. So the next step is to create the CNN model. And here we created um, a very simple, probably the simplest uh, model possible, where we will use the sample patches that were exported previously. And you have to, to give the same values here as you use for the uh, export uh, a bit uh, earlier. So we use a 40 by 40 sample patch size and a number of image, image layers of four, the same four that we use when exporting the samples. Um, then we use all of the three classes, the soil, target, and weed. We will only use one hidden layer, and this uh, will have a kernel size of 11. This means that we will have a filter of 11 by 11, parsing this like uh, 40 by 40 uh, sample patch size. It will generate a number of feature maps of 40, and then we, we also did the max pooling to decrease the, the size of the uh, final uh, layer from the CNN. So this is a very simple one. You can increase here the, the number of hidden layers, for example, two, but then you, you will have to specify further parameters for the next hidden layers. So this gives you a lot of flexibility in uh, building your CNN architecture. So this should be enough for, for our very simple application uh, uh, shown today. So after we create this model, uh, then we are in the process of training it. I, I will skip this uh, run of, of the training because it will take around 10 minutes to train a CNN uh, network. And here we have to specify where exactly we have saved the, the samples in which folders, and we will use the same samples folder that we uh, used uh, previously. And then there are some uh, hyperparameters to, uh, to set. And in our case, uh, it is a learning rate, which is 0 0.0015. You have to play around with this in order to make sure that uh, you will get um, target uh, a hot spot, uh, heat map with target location of the tree. So it will be mostly a trial and error approach to play around. But this is a good value to start with, and you should uh, increase it or decrease it uh, and see how uh, the results are changing. So we used 5,000 training steps in, in training the CNN, and for each training steps, we used 50 uh, samples uh, to be used in, in each training step. So this is a very simple training of the CNN uh, model that we created earlier. After we train the CNN, we can apply the model. And for this, we just copied our map from the, from the main map here, we copied to the test map. So after copying to the test map, we can apply the CNN uh, that we trained before. And we will use the same four layers, layer one, two, three, and four, the spectral bands from the UAV. We are only interested to get a, a final heat map with the probabilities only for the target class, uh, the tree class. So we will not use the other class. We only use the soil and, and the weeds to make sure that the algorithm is able to differentiate between the trees and those other two classes. So after you apply this, this model, you'll get a, a, a final result. And I'll switch now to our test map. So we will see here in the left, this is a target heat map that we got, meaning that this heat map expresses the probabilities of a single pixel of uh, as being a tree with white 
we have probabilities closer to one with black we have probability closer to zero so we already see the shapes of the trees popping up in our heat map but in order to to go further we still um so as you see this is only the southern part of our study area in order to go further we need to uh, process a bit more this heat map in order to extract the center of each tree as kit mentioned before you can also save your model and you can use it later or you can apply it in, in a different uh, study areas with similar uh, color characteristics now that we have applied the cnn and we uh, we created the model we train it apply it and save it we will go further and uh, smooth the heat map in order to get rid of, of some spurious uh, pixels around and by this we will use a simple uh, gaussian filter in order to to smooth the target heat map and we will save the output layer in in a layer called smooth heat map we will use a filter, a Gaussian filter of size 15 by uh, 15 in order to uh, obtain this smoothed heat map. So I will switch now to the smoothed heat map. So this will be the difference between the actual heat map and the smoothed heat map. You see now that they are uh, way more smoothed and some pixels disappear that were not uh, actual a tree, but only like salt and pepper uh, error effects. And then we will apply a local uh, maxima to find uh, the center of the trees. A as you see, we have trees here of different sizes. Uh, we have smaller trees, we have bigger trees. We have uh, on the Western sides here, we have uh, not so pruned trees. So they are more uh, not so circular shape. We have smaller trees here and, and so on. So in order to find the local maxima, we, we just used uh, some uh, morphology, mainly uh, approaches from where we can uh, extract all of the pixels that are like in the center of each white bulb here as being uh, a local maxima uh, for this uh, single tree here. So if you run this one, for example, now, it should give us another local maxima uh, layer that should show us the location of the trees. For this, uh, for this post-processing, you will find a nice uh, webinar and also very nice resources on the eCognition community on how to handle the heat map after you obtain it, uh, after you apply the CNN algorithm. So I highly recommend to go through that and just uh, adapt it to, you, to your needs. So now we have some objects that are here, which are mainly uh, the target location of the trees. And as you can see, we have now multiple, for example, for this tree, there are multiple detection, meaning that we, we had multiple crown detection issues that we will uh, tackle in, in, in the next phase. So from this one, we will create a target vector layer by using simply uh, an algorithm that is called convert image objects to vector objects. So we have image objects now, this one that are classified as target, and we will convert them to a point shape file using the center of the gravity of each polygon. And the thematic layer will be named targets. So if we run this one, Right now, we will have single points as, as, as the target of the trees. So just to, to recap on that, uh, we used three classes, trees, soil, and weeds on the, uh, to train on the northern side of, of our study area. If you don't have the samples, uh, you can use other techniques in order to to somehow speed up your uh, samples collections. And you can use like a, a template matching techniques. You only select a few three samples and then enrich your samples by using uh, this uh, very small amount of uh, tree samples. 
or you can uh, manually digitize some uh, of uh, your samples of interest. So now we have these uh, results, but as you can see, we have here like multiple crown detection issues. And of course we could have done better with the CNN by uh, playing more with the fine tuning of the parameters. But let's say that we are happy now with these results and we want to, to go further um, and to refine this in order to get rid of this uh, double uh, crown detection. So I'll now go back to our presentation to remove this this uh, multiple crown detection issues we use the super pixel approach which was also implemented in the incognition 9.3 version uh, so this is yet another type of segmentation that is added into the software and it's mainly uh, shortly it's an over segmentation as you can see on on the right it might look like a chessboard segmentation when we don't have any texture in, in our image, or it can uh, adapt to the context of the image more easily when we have a more textured region. So these super pixels contain more information than pixels because you can use now, since we are having objects, you can use other properties of the object like geometry, texture, and so on. They are of low computational complexity, so you get them in a few seconds, even for large areas. So it, it, is, it is a good start uh, if you want to reduce the complexity of a big, uh, very high resolution image, for example. It can also capture the image redundancy, so you can uh, get rid of some uh, errors, let's say, in your image. And in the recognition, there are three uh, main algorithms uh, implemented which are derived from the same algorithm named simple linear iterative clustering and here in the figure this is taken from the reference uh, book from the recognition you will see uh, slick super pixel segmentation of three different uh, region sizes 10 on the left 20 in the middle and 40 on uh, the right so shortly this uh, super pixel named slick is a gradient ascent segmentation which is uh, done by placing the seeds on a regular grid and then growing the objects uh, until some conditions of uh, compactness and homogeneity uh, are met so in the case of slick this is uh, more sensitive uh, to the texture that we have in the image so it will produce uh, smooth regular size super pixels in the smooth regions and highly irregular super pixels in the textured uh, region as, as you can see here for example on the left side uh, the the roof super pixels have uh, more uh, have, have a shape more close to, to a square than uh, when compared to other region for example these uh, uh, trees or, or grass in in the center part of the image so this is Slick, which is uh, one of the most popular super pixel algorithm also in uh, computer vision. Um, the Slick O or Slick Zero is the zero parameter version of the Slick. And this, uh, the main difference is that this method generates regular shaped objects in both textured and smooth regions. So a compactness constraint is applied on the super pixel generation, no matter how the texture in that region uh, looks like so you might end up with a segmentation that is uh, more similar to a honeycomb structure like in the segmentation from the image in on the right no matter of uh, the objects from the real world you get similar size and compact uh, super pixels so this is the slick o which is uh, also a really nice uh, super pixel segmentation available in ecognition and the last one is mSlick, which is from Manifold uh, Slick, uh, where this method optimizes the objects using different parameters uh, and the end results are some more contact, content sensitive super pixel objects. So this is more towards like what we are used with, with a normal segmentation approach in uh, e-cognition like the multi-resolution segmentation because it gets you objects of similar sizes which are uh, well uh, which are good to be used if we want to stick to the boundaries of the features that we we have in the image so now i will switch back to 
e cognition software for the last part for the refinement part let me make this one bigger so for this one for the refinement so we want to get rid of this double crown uh, detection issue and we will use the uh, heat map which is the the uh, the uh, input layer is the local maximum and we multiply it by a thousand because i also multiply the the ndvi layer by a thousand in order to have a, a broader range of values when applying the segmentation and not to be constrained to very small values between minus one and one or zero and one in the case of uh, uh, heat map resultant from the cnn so if you apply this one then you'll get a nice layer arithmetics here so this is the 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 heat map smoothed uh, after we applied the cnn and now we also transfer the image layer the layer 5 which is our ndvi from the main map to the test map where we apply and where we have the uh, cnn results so we are now working on test map and we are transferring the layer 5 to test map in order to apply the refinement on the heat map and on the NDVI. So then a very simple uh, super pixel approach uh, and we apply it on the pixel level on the test map as, as uh, explained before. And we will only use these two layers, the arithmetics, which is the heat map uh, resulted from the CNN and the layer five, which is the NDVI from the UAV images. So we will be using the slick uh, super pixel algorithm. You can also try and use the other ones if, if uh, you have other uh, interest in your projects. Uh, for this one, the iteration is set to 20, which is a good compromise between the speed and the accuracy of the final uh, super pixel segmentation. And by 20 iteration, I mean there are 20 iteration from uh, the seeding uh, from where you place the seeds and you grow the object is done 20 times. And in this way, you make sure that the edges of the objects are refined continuously 20 times in order to get the best uh, delineation of the boundaries in the image. The enforced label connectivity parameter, uh, if set to yes, this is a good way in uh, this is a, a good approach if you want to get rid of the very small super pixels that you obtain in the, in, uh, in your approach. And for this one, we will use, it is set to yes, and we will use at, uh, a value of 25, which 25 means that less than a quarter size super pixel should be absorbed. This means that we are getting rid of the very small objects that are in, in the first uh, quarter, the smallest objects obtained by the super pixels. So you will get more uh, similar sized super pixels by using this enforced label connectivity. Uh, we will use a uh, size, uh, we did this uh, iteratively by using region sizes from 40, 41 until 50. And I started by 40 because if you remember, we used 40 by 40 uh, sample patches previously. So now we, are only uh, interested in the very big trees that were detected multiple times and we want to combine these into a single detection. And the ruler is a, a compactness constraint that it, it's also uh, used in the um, uh, slick uh, super pixel generation. You can play around with these uh, parameters and see what happens when you modify one uh, or another. So if we execute this one, should take around 30 seconds uh, to do, but we will get a delineation uh, of the trees using the, the two layers of uh, heat map from CNN and the NTVI layers uh, as obtained from the uh, red and near infrared bands of the UAV. It should be done in seconds. Now we have to switch to the view classification and to see the objects so we got because this is still a very very small size 40 by 40 we got uh in some places we got circular objects in some places we uh will refine this uh, double crown detection by increasing the size 
of the super pixels until uh, 50 by 50. We only use uh, from 40 by 40 to 50 by 50 because after a uh, size of 50, there was no uh, modification to our uh, final results. So now, uh, what is really nice in recognition is that you can input your own knowledge about uh, the trees. And this was done by thinking, okay, uh, how a, a, a multiple crown detection should look like. Well, first of all, it needs to be inside a tree, which in our case, the trees are more uh, uh, in, in the shape of uh, a circle. So we will use then uh, an assigned class techniques where we put two constraints. We, first of it, we wanted to, to have the round that's lower than 0 0.5. And this one uh, means that uh, it should be as close to a circle as possible. Clo uh, roundness is between 0 and 1 and values closer to 0. It's, it's a perfect circle. And we also want to be uh, them uh, symmetric. So we don't want elongated uh, circled objects. And this uh, was also set to values lower or equal than 0 0.5. Again, between 0 and 1, with 0 being the most uh, symmetric uh, objects. And we only use uh, in this classification uh, those objects that have on the number of overlap targets uh, higher than 1. It's, this means that we are only looking to those objects which have like two objects inside. For example, this this one. I'm not sure if this one is yet symmetric, but we will see uh, in a moment. So if we classified, if we uh, execute this classification procedure, then we will have this object classified as target. And then we can uh, further process this one in order to remove the double crown classifi uh, classification issue. Like you see here, here, here all of this will be uh, done. So we will reduce the errors in the end. This is only for a 40 by 40 super pixel size, but if we stick and increase the size uh, iteratively, then we will also refine more of these objects that are now not selected as uh, being a multiple crown detection. I've done this uh, outside of recognition in, in, uh, in an open source of JS software. It, it's a basic, uh, thing where you recompute the centroid, or you can also do it uh, here if you want to compute the centroid of the classified objects as shown before. So this was the second part, which was a really basic refinement uh, to get rid of these multiple crown detection issues. And heading back to the presentation, it, it is almost done. So we covered in this webinar, uh, how to work with the recognition CNN algorithms. And you remember that we use the create sample algorithms, which will create the samples based on your uh, shapefile points, which is a really nice way to save time um, in creating the samples, which we all know that CNN needs a lot of samples most of the time. After creating the samples, we uh, created a on CNN architecture, a uh, CNN model that was further used to train the CNN and then uh, apply it and save the model. We then obtain uh, the target location for each trees. And then we used a very simple object-based approach uh, with uh, knowledge included in the rule sets in order to get rid of the multiple crown detection issues. And this was shown on a, on a application for precision agriculture and more precisely in identification of Citus trees from an uh, our card uh, from the link of Center uh, Research Center. So that was all from my side. I think we will now switch to, to, to the Q&A session. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to uh, write me anytime. Uh, if it was too basic, then write me about more complicated approaches. If it was too advanced, then write me about more uh, basic approaches that uh, I might uh, share with you. So some recognition resources that I usually use in order to improve my skills in the software is the recognition community, where you will find also a very, a very nice um, 
uh, nice and complex tutorial about the CNN uh, implementation into the software. And keep an eye also on the LinkedIn pages and YouTube, and also on the archive of the of the webinars that are available through the uh, Trimble Geospatial uh, for the e-cognition. That's that's it from my side. Thank you very much, Ovido, uh, for your great presentation and demonstration of the cognition software and the capabilities using CNN uh, together with object-based image analysis in our environment. Now we are at the last part of uh, this webinar, the question and answer session. And um, for all attendees, please use now uh, the uh, the question dialogue uh, from the GoToMeeting tool to yeah to ask your questions so so that we can select uh, I hope all of them or uh, uh, some of them. Okay, the first question this is uh, for me. Yeah, by the way, I'm Christian, market manager for Ecognition and uh, Info, and uh, the first question is uh, if. A recording will be available of this webinar after this session. Yes, of course, you will, you will be informed as soon as the recording is online and you can also search for geospatial webinars, Trimble geospatial webinars, so that you can find uh, our uh, webinar archive. So now go through the list there. The first list it's uh, for a video. Uh, there is someone asking if uh, what smoothing algorithm do you have used uh, to uh, smooth the the heat map button line it's just a gaussian uh, algorithm or you did some uh, more complicated uh, smoothing yes uh, thank you for this one uh, it was a very simple <laughs> one 15 by 15 gaussian filter that will simply smooth your heat map and get rid of some uh, spurious pixels that are not really a tree Wonderful. And for all other uh, customers here in eCognition, you can also simply execute some uh, raster uh, uh, algorithms to smooth uh, or to find edges in raster pixel inside eCognition. It's not just object based image analysis. So there's another question. Um, has an eCognition user control about uh, what optimizer? and what last function will be used during the CNN training. Do you have here some insights for us, uh, Ovidio? Uh, yes. Um, you, as implemented at, at this point, I, you, most probably you will not get the full uh, range of uh, possibilities that you will get when, let's say, you will code your CNN approach. And, and at this time, you can only set the parameters in the algorithms windows from the cognition, and you will not see uh, much of the results in the background. So most of the time, it is a trial and error approach in order to get the right uh, parameters, including the, the uh, learning rate and, and so on. If Christian, if you have more on this one. No, I, I don't have more here. Uh... I have to take a deeper look uh, into the documentation here. I'm not so 100% sure. That's the reason why I ask. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's a general question. What is the advantage of CNN uh, compared to other classifiers also available in eCognition like random forest or support vector machine? What's your feeling uh, of video here? My feeling is that you can use all of them and see how yeah. each of, of them uh, performs. For example, for the tree identification, there are a broad range of uh, algorithms that you can use inside the cognition. And in our case, this was one example using the CNN, but you can also use, uh, for example, template matching. If you have, uh, let's say, trees of the same template, uh, you can use a random forest or you can simply use a, a segmentation followed by a, a rule set with knowledge from your side on how a tree looks like so you define the ontology of a tree and then just create a rule set okay thank you very much here there's uh, the next one is a general question if there is a trial version available for eCognition for practice yes of course please go to www.ecognition.com and you will find then a download trial uh, button where you can yeah 
download a fully free version of eCognition and uh, you can do everything uh, without any time uh, issues uh, with this uh, version of eCognition. But there is something, of course, a restriction. You cannot export the results. But with the trial version, you can really test the software if it's working well for you. And if you are happy then, then, of course, you can purchase the software. Uh, uh, contacting sales also via our website. Um, just a moment, I have to select the next question. Uh, Ovidio, can you comment on eCognition CNN classification performance, the processing time, uh, uh, the PC resources um, on your PC? Um, mm -hmm. Here, maybe I can start uh, with the first comment. Uh, the eCognition CNN impl uh, implementation uh, supports also GPU processing, not just CPU processing. You can switch this feature on and off if you want, but uh, there is one limitation. You need an NVIDIA graphic card uh, to use the GPU processing. But on NVIDIA, uh, on uh, Ovidio, on, uh, on your PC, um, you shared already some processing time, like uh, what you mentioned before, that sample patching creation is just a minute. Uh, but what is the most um, processing intensive step in the CNN, um, using CNN recognition? Mm -hmm. The most consuming step is the training of the CNN, which will, mm -hmm. uh, in our case, took roughly uh, under 15 minutes. So all in all, uh, from the first uh, algorithm to the last one, it will be under half an hour of uh, execution, but you will have to do some trial and error tests in advance until you will reach your final uh, results. I use this software on a normal uh, computer, nothing special about it, eight gigs mm -hmm. of RAM. Uh, so I had no problems uh, uh, running a CNN on a 75 hectares area okay. of very high resolution. Uh, there's, there's no step where you have to wait one hour, things like that. It's good, good to know. Yeah. There's also a general question about, uh, is there a general rule uh, uh, how many samples are necessary to, uh, to train and, and model? And um, it, yeah, one of the advantages and things, the cool things with CNN is that um, many samples are needed and with eCognition we we integrated a, an algorithm called general sample patches which helps you to generate the samples fully automatically uh, or video show this if you have already some initial image objects coming from your ground truth data or coming from another approach eCognition will generate for you automatically uh, 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 amount of samples and you can select this. Maybe you start with thousands, but thousand uh, samples um, per object, but depends on your ground truth data, of course. From my point of view, there is not a general rule of uh, how many samples are needed. But maybe Ovidio, you have here some uh, another view or some recommendation, what you think so many samples are needed for a class inside the CNN. It's hard to say from my point of view, but please let me know if you have another. It's the same for me. So okay. it, it's very hard to decide. So best of all, just start with a number and increase it and decrease it and see what happens when you increase and decrease this uh, number of samples. It, it It is also a matter of how well your target uh, class differentiate from the other classes. So if you have more complicated classes, you might need more samples in order to make sure that the CNN is able to differentiate between all of these classes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's an interesting question from an Turnbull Business Center user. If eCognition uh, can help to uh, detect trees and get the height and the volume of plants um, using multispectral data together with point cloud data. And uh, yes, this is one of the cool things of eCognition. It, it has a data fusion capabilities. That means you can combine your uh, point cloud data with it, the image data uh, together uh, and doing um, the uh, analysis work. That means you can use the 3D information from the point cloud data together with the spectral information uh, from the image data to, to detect trees. 
that's uh, quite good um, um, to doing this with CNN or with some other rules. You have the full capabilities here. So there's another question. Does the cognition cover solution for computing LIDAR matrix? And uh, yes, we have um, the LIDAR matrix um, features available as uh, object features in eCognition. That means an image object. Uh, for an image object, uh, you can uh, calculate uh, easily um, different uh, LIDAR metrics um, uh, features uh, with eCognition fully automatically. We have this available. You can also convert this to raster layers, whatever you want. Uh, this technology is available. Please take a look to the eCognition community for this specific question. You will find uh, uh, the answers and example projects using LiDAR data in eCognition as input. But it's, uh, it's another topic. Uh, uh, oh, is it possible to load CNN models from TensorFlow trained outside eCognition? Yes, we are fully TensorFlow uh, compatible. That means um, if you create a model and train the model in eCognition, you can save such a model and also uh, use this uh, outside eCognition. And by the way, also the other way around is working. If you have already a CNN uh, model, a TensorFlow model, uh, trained and used outside eCognition or created outside eCognition, you can load this also inside the eCognition. You have to change here some parameters. Please contact the support if you need some uh, additional help here. That's a very special case, but uh, should work. There's another question if uh, GPU processing uh, is supported. I mentioned this already before. If you have an NVIDIA graphic card, then yes, it is possible. So that's more or less. Just a moment. I have to check the last question here. Okay, that's that's uh, ah. There's an it's a general question. Who is the sales representation for this project in Brazil? you find uh, uh, on our website, www.ecognition.com, uh, a, a so-called dealer locator, uh, where you can search for your local uh, Trimble eCognition sales representative in your region. Um, and for Brazil, I think it is 3 uh, located in uh, Rio. Whatever, please search for it. The eCognition website is a good starting point in general. You will find uh, product information on the website. You can contact sales, of course, and you will have a link to the eCognition community, what uh, Uvidio mentioned before. It's a perfect source for um, example data, for training data, to ask questions, to get answers. It's in collaboration environment uh, uh, for our customers. And also the eCognition product management team is active here and will help whenever it's possible. So we're running out of time. I would say again to Ovidio, thank you very much for your presentation and demonstration. And uh, for all other pe people here, if you have any question, please contact Ovidio directly, what we mentioned before, or you can also contact us uh, via support at ecognition.com, or please take a look. That's my recommendation to the eCognition community uh, that we all can help um, you using our software environment. By the way, we have also an eCognition YouTube channel where we are uh, um, uploading monthly videos. We call it eCognition Deco Deconstruction, where we show uh, in detail some function in the software or specific function in detail so that you can learn systematically the cool things um, using eCognition. And again, please take a look to the eCognition community. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I hope we see us again in the next monthly webinar. And I wish you a nice day and a nice evening. Goodbye.